Hello and welcome to another episode of the Root of Our Health podcast. I am your host, Elizabeth, a national board certified health and wellness coach, a certified functional medicine health coach, and currently working as an employee wellness coach. Each and every other week, I will be talking about topics that has to do with alternative health and wellness for women as we celebrate the second half of our lives. These episodes will range from solo to interviewing professionals in the space, as well as getting to know everyday people like you and how we can implement simple bite-sized habits into our daily lives that will help us thrive. And speaking of thriving, so today's episode, today's solo episode is all about how to thrive in life using a nighttime and morning routine. So today I, it's going to be quick. Um, it's a part one and a part two. So of course I'm splitting this in half talking about a nighttime routine today. And then the next part two, talking about a morning routine. Reason obviously being that we have to kind of split these up is we want to work on one thing at a time. A lot of times we try to do everything all at once. And of course, of course we get overwhelmed and then we quit because, you know, we just can't do it all. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Um, and I try, I got to tell you, I try to do it all. And there are times I'm just like, you know, you got to chunk this down a little bit more because it's just not happening, but don't give up. Okay. Now why a nighttime routine and why a morning routine? Well, of course we can't start with the morning routine unless we have good sleep. And the only way that we can get good sleep, or at least let's just put it this way. One thing that can help with getting good quality sleep is by having a nighttime routine. And this has been science, you know, scientifically backed both the nighttime and the morning routine. Believe me, those who thrive in life, those who are excelling in life and have a lot of energy has at least a morning routine. Not sure about a nighttime routine, but come on. Like I said, if you are set up really good at night, have a great night's sleep, of course, then your morning routine can be achievable. So let's start with the nighttime routine. What are you all currently doing? And I ask this with my clients and a lot of times, guess what's happening right after work, sit down, watch TV or play on the computer or doing whatever. So we're on the screens, right? So we have screens um, and we're not really taking time, not only just for ourselves, but to kind of wind down. I get it. When we're all stressed out from the day, the last thing we want to do is just focus on ourselves. We want to numb out. We want to kind of just basically, you know, um, yeah, numb out. So what we do is we just do things that will not utilize our brain anymore. Nighttime routines actually don't utilize our brain. It really sets us up because in general, as a human being in, and you know, way back when, way back when obviously paleolithic times, when, and even back, gosh, I don't even know, since day one, let's just put it that way. Since day one, whatever you believe in, how we got here since day one, we were, our bodies were meant to rise when the sun came up, or at least, you know, dusk, or excuse me, um, dawn, and then go to sleep when it was dusk or when the sun went down. So our circadian rhythm got used to what went on in terms of our, um, of, of nature, right? So take it, when you come home in whatever time that is, I'm hoping that it's not like late. And I'm, I'm really strictly talking here to people who not just nine to five, but has a regular work hours, so to speak. 
not again, it doesn't have to just, you know, cut off at five. Um, but I'm not talking about second shift or third shifters because those really, really hard. And I will have a podcast episode about um, how to, uh, you know, obviously uh, move through <clears throat> the, um, you know, the, the get, I guess you can't really get your circadian rhythm in that instance, but at least the tips and tricks of how to uh, sleep better, kind of, you know, get your body used to this, to the, you know, times really. But right now this, this uh, podcast is actually talking about those who have a regular work schedule, who, you know, obviously, like I said, it could end at five, six, whatever that may be. Now, right after work, we're doing a lot more, aren't we? We're taking care of the children or we're um, taking them everywhere because obviously, you know, the, um, the extracurricular activities for kids nowadays, for teenagers and, and, uh, you know, young adults, pretty darn high from what I hear. Um, so carting around those, those, uh, you know, those, those kids around to whatever practice they have, Hey, go with it. Cause you know, that is what we want them to do is be more active, but that takes up our time, doesn't it? So what happens is we do that, we get home, we're exhausted, stressed out from the day. And again, you're just sitting here like at eight o'clock being like, you know what? Yeah, nothing else is happening. I'm sitting my ass on this couch and I'm watching X, Y, and Z. I am playing on this phone. I am whatever it is, the screen just kind of, again, numbing out. That's okay for a little bit. But what, what happens then when you get into the, you, you, it's kind of a time suck, right? You watch TV and you're just, I don't even know. Some people just stare. I've, I've done that before. I don't know. Have you, have you, I've done it to where I stare at the TV, not even just knowing what's going on. It's just something to look at. It's just like my brain is shut off, not doing a damn thing. And so, you know, we do that, but it's a time suck. We scroll on whatever social media, Facebook, social, you know, uh, Instagram, whatever it is. If you're on Twitter, you're doing the back and forth on the Twitter X as it's called now, but that is a time suck. So what ends up happening is, okay, you're sitting down at 8, 8, 8 PM, finally, um, eight or nine, give or take. And then you're looking at these devices until 10, until 11, until midnight, until 1 a.m. And ooh, it's 1 a.m. I have to get up at 6 a.m. Hmm, that's not good. So this is where the nighttime routine comes in. And again, this will set you up for that morning routine so that this way you could thrive in your job, in your life with the kids, you can be a superhero and you can take on the world. I don't know if, if I'm being a little over dramatic with that, but it will definitely help. So what do you do? Okay. Well, obviously when you do come home, give yourself, it just kind of like be by yourself, right? Just kind of either meditate, read, do something that calms you down. One thing that I also noticed that helps, um, is taking, uh, you know, well for stress really, really, it, you know, helps ashwagandha, but also, um, magnesium, magnesium, uh, glycinate, definitely helps calms the nervous system. There are other supplements, um, I think is, uh, L-theanine and something else. I, I don't take it, but from what I hear, uh, you know, top scientists, health scientists, uh, you know, Andrew Huberman and Peter Atia, you know, doctors like that, they all rave about those, um, you know, supplements to kind of help calm you down. This is the time 
when we need to just calm down. And when we do that, our cortisol levels should lower. Now, a lot of times, because we are stressed, because we're, you know, doing so much, or, and we'll get into this in the, in, for the morning routine, or we start out our day already on somebody else's clock, already um, kind of in that go mode. Our bodies were not meant for that. Our brains were not meant for that. And we, I had obviously other um, guests on here talking about how we are human doings and we should be human beings. We should be being, not always doing. And again, I'm talking to myself here. I'm currently in this go, go, go mode. Uh, I, you know, sometimes it is what it is. And, but I do have boundaries and I do say no. And I do understand that a nighttime routine can set me up for wonderful sleep. And I love sleep. I don't get hours of it. I get enough. But you can tell the difference between a good and, and bad night's sleep. So one thing that you can do is when you, um, again, when you're at home, obviously, you know, things are settling down. Instead, instead of turning on the TV and numbing out, pick up a book. Do something that kind of relaxes you. And, you know, I say meditate, but it you can always listen to some really meditative music, um, you know, if you want color or write in a journal, I say write in a journal just because again, our minds are still going and one way for it to kind of settle a little bit along with your body, because you definitely want that body to be at rest, um, is to get it all out. Maybe talk with your um, significant other or your partner, or, you know, maybe um, read to your kids if you have small children. So things that kind of, you know, get you in that moment of getting ready for bed. Um, I'll give you an example of my night to nighttime routine. And again, do one thing, start with one thing. If you don't do anything at all, start with one small thing that you can do, that you love to do. Um, again, journaling, reading, all of that stuff, perfect. And then keep doing it, keep doing it. And if you can add one more thing, great. If that helps, then just leave it alone. And then we can go into part two with the morning routine. So how I set up for my nighttime routine is I try and I've been actually really good, obviously in the new year, it's still January. So um, mostly, mostly, even when I'm traveling, I'm, I'm doing this as well. So it's, it, it is helping. I'm cutting off being on the computer at 730, whether what it whatever it is, whether it's me still working, me doing this podcast, me, um, you know, being on social media, whatever that is, 7.30 is cut off. Then 7.30, I, jur I journal in my um, fitness journal. I have two journals. Yes, uh, I talked about my goal for the next six months. So it is a fitness journal um, I'm writing in and kind of just understanding what my, you know, brain, body, all of that um ended up, you know, happening today. So I write in that. I then do my normal, you know, getting ready for bed routine in terms of, you know, washing the face, doing all my skincare, um, brushing teeth, um, playing with the cat. Yeah, I, I, I definitely need to do that before I go to sleep. Um, so I play with the cat and then once all of that happens, and of course, in this time I've taken my magnesium, I drink, you know, my last water. Um, so roughly around eight, 
p.m. is when all of that happens. Um, I try to do earlier, but it's way harder <laughs> to cut the uh, drinking of the water earlier than that. But it is what it is again. Uh, so from there, around 8, 8, 10, that's you know, usually when I'll sit on the couch. Then I'll journal, journal. I'll journal about my day. Um, I'll journal what I'm grateful for. I'll journal what I am looking forward to, you know, things like that. Um, and I try to keep up every day. Uh, there were a time, there were times actually last year when I left it a week, two weeks, and it just, it just got to where, um, it didn't really help much when I, when I came back to it, but doing it daily, it's been really, really helpful for me. And then right after that, I do read. I used to read in the morning and I'll talk about the morning routine, um, my morning routine on the next episode, uh, the solo episode, but um, I used to do it in the morning, uh, but given time, again, I actually switched it to the night time. So I try to do, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of both journaling and reading. Uh, That'll give me plenty of time. And of course, you know, obviously it's not always going to be uh, either utilized or whatnot. Um, but again, I do not look at my phone. Uh, the only time I do look at my phone is when I turn the notifications off for my texts. And it doesn't bother me when I'm sleeping, but when I wake up, if you know I get a text, I do not want to see that. I do not want to see that when I wake up. So I um, turn it off um, and then I get into bed. Well, I do a sleep cycle. I put on brown noise, uh, things like that. And that helps me to sleep. And I get in bed and I have my eye mask on. um, And yeah, and I even use a mouth tape. Um, You know, it's actually really good, really beneficial for those who mouth breathe. So uh, tips for you all. If you do mouth breathe, please use, uh, it does help, a mouth tape. At night, if you can do it during the day, awesome, but it'll help you kind of, it'll help you breathe easier through your nose. That's it. That's it. So it's kind of from 730 until roughly I try, I try really hard to get into bed by 845, 830, 845, around there. Then I'm winding down and you will be amazed because I noticed this. Around 7.30, 8 o'clock, no matter what I'm doing, I'm yawning. I'm feeling that tiredness. My body is understanding that it's time for bed. Then when you go to bed, you're more able to fall asleep and hopefully stay asleep. Again, if you're setting yourself up for this, uh, with you know, if you need brown noise or uh, those, you know, helpful things, uh, use it. I use insight timer. I'll, uh, you know, link that in the show notes. Insight timer is my go-to, um, for not only meditation, but for the music, for just everything in general. And you don't have to pay. They do have a pay, um, a subscription or a, a plus model. You don't have to pay. So hopefully this has helped you kind of set up your nighttime routine. And this, again, I cannot stress this enough. It is super, super important to have a nighttime routine set in place. Because again, once we talk about the morning routine, that will be so much easier for you to do. Um, And then you can definitely rock it in life and anything. So hopefully this has been very helpful for you. If you can, please share this around because I know that there's plenty of people that need an understanding tips or tricks of how to do a nighttime routine or what they can do, you can do. Um, And also please, you know, rate and review this podcast. Uh, you know, it gets up in the rankings. And when that happens, this podcast gets into so many people's more uh, people's ears. Definitely want that to happen. Uh, And last but certainly not least, 
please do either subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to this podcast. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yes, and I'll be forever, forever grateful. So thank you again. And until next time, you are worth it.